Hello everyone, I'm Yu Zhe from MIT. I'll be presenting simple, simple self-supervised learning of periodic targets. By the end of this talk, I hope you will be convinced of how we can effectively learn representations for periodic signals in a self-supervised manner. Periodicity is ubiquitous in nature and learning periodic information plays an important role in many fields. When monitoring the Earth from space using satellite imagery, periodicity is important in now and future casting of environmental events such as land surface temperature. In human behavior, there are many repetitive body motions such as gait and blinking, which when quantitatively measured can help us understand internal states. Extracting the temporal morphology of periodic human motions is critical in healthcare. By analyzing hand motions or tremors, we can assess the progression of neurological conditions such as Parkinson's disease. Finally, learning from video measurements has shown to extract periodic vital signs such as PPG, heart rate, and breathing. Here, the videos are magnified to better show the blood volume changes as well as breathing motions. These periodic vital signs are crucial for human health monitoring. However, while learning periodic targets is important, labeling such data is typically challenging and resource-intensive. For example, medical data such as cardiac signals are complex to collect, requiring precise and synchronized measurements from clinical sensors. Fortunately, given the large amount of unlabeled data, self-supervised learning would be a promising choice for periodic learning. Self-supervised learning enables teaching models from unlabeled data by defining proxy tasks to extract useful features. State-of-the-art contrastive SSL methods such as SimClear use data augmentation and a contrastive loss to learn powerful representations for downstream tasks. The core idea is to encourage a pair of similar samples to be close in the representation space while simultaneously driving distance between negative pairs. Here, positive pairs are often created via data transformations. If we take a close look, the overall framework can be dissected into three parts. First, we need to construct effective views to define useful positive and negative samples. Second, after extracting features, we use a similarity function to measure the distance of these samples in the high-dimensional space. Finally, we leverage a loss function to separate positive and negative pairs. These three components are generally defined for SSL, but what about learning periodic targets? Unlike existing approaches for SSL that are tailored for image or video classification, periodic tasks could exhibit different inductive biases, and such periodic information is often overlooked in current designs. For example, in human action or repetition counting, the actual action or activity performed in the video may not be important, but rather the repetitive pattern and its speed or magnitude are more informative. Moreover, in sensing human physiology from videos, we want to extract cardiac or breathing estimations. Here, we magnify the blood volume changes for better visualization. Again, the identity pose or the angle of the person are not important, but rather the repetitive pattern of the blood volume pulse across time is more important. Given these observations, how should we exploit periodic inductive bias to design suitable SSL methods for periodic learning? Okay, before diving into the details of our approach, let's do a simple quiz. Consider the task of identifying the speed of repetitive actions in a video. Can you distinguish whether the speed or frequency is the same between these two videos? It is surprisingly difficult, but what about now? It is easier to see now that the two videos exhibit different activity frequencies. Although you might not know the exact speed in the original video, we can still identify that the two videos have different frequencies, as that the third video is a slower version of the middle one, despite of them being exactly the same in activity and identity. 
In fact, although the first two videos have different activities and identities, the underlying action frequencies are actually the same. This indicates that in an ideal representation space, the first two should be close, while the last two should be far away in the feature space. Let's take another example from sensing human vitals. You probably cannot identify whether these two people have the same heart rate from the video observation, but you should be relatively confident that these two videos have different heart rates, even you do not know the underlying pulse signal. Again, despite that the first two videos have different appearances, the underlying heart rates are actually the same. And the last two videos have different heart rates while being very similar in appearance. Again, for the ideal learned representations, the first two should be close while the last two should be far away in the representation space. These observations tell us that the frequency information is essential, which has implications for how we design variances and invariances when creating effective positive and negative views in periodic learning. Specifically, we construct negative views of data through transformations in the frequency domain. Given the input sequence X, we know there's an underlying associated periodic signal with its original speed denoted as 1. We then transform X to create a series of speed or frequency altered samples, and this changes the underlying periodic target, thus creating different negative views. Although the original frequency is unknown, we effectively divide pseudo-speed or frequency labels for unlabeled input X. We call such transformations periodicity variant augmentations tau. Further, we take transformations that do not change the identity of the input after which the speed and frequency of the sample does not change. We define this as periodicity invariant augmentations sigma thus creating different positive views of the sample. We then send these augmented views to the encoder F to extract corresponding features. We highlight that, unlike conventional contrastive SSL schemes, Simper creates negative views not from other instances, but directly from the same instance itself. Now, given these periodic representations, how should one measure the similarity of these features we identify that the feature similarity is different in the context of periodic representations. Consider the heart rate estimation example where we denote the extracted periodic features as the anchor. If we delay the video by a few seconds, we can extract an index shifted version of the anchor feature. Further, if we reverse the video in the time domain, corresponding index reversed features would be generated. Finally, if we change the video speed, it results in frequency changed features. By definition, we know that no matter whether we introduce a small time delay or reverse the sequence, the underlying heart rate of the person would not change. This indicates that a proper periodic feature similarity measure should induce high similarity for these features and should also capture a continuous similarity change when the feature frequency varies. Specifically, Conventional similarity measures, such as cosine similarity, emphasize strict proximity between two feature vectors and are sensitive to index-shifted features, reversed features, and features with changed frequencies. In contrast, periodic feature similarity should also induce high proximity scores for features with shifted and sometimes reversed indexes, while capturing a continuous similarity change when the feature frequency varies. Note that both measures would exhibit low similarity for random features. Concretely, given two feature vectors, existing similarity measures leverage a distance function over the feature indexes where cosine or L2 distances are usually used. This corresponds to an index contrast scheme. In contrast, in periodic feature similarity, instead of directly measuring the distance in the time or the index space, we first convert the feature vectors into frequency domain, and then compute the high dimensional distance. And this corresponds to a frequency contrast scheme, which enforces periodic features. We provide two practical instantiations for periodic feature similarity 
including the maximum cross correlation and the normalized power spectrum density. Now, given the customized view generation and periodic similarity measures, how should we design an effective contrastive loss for periodic learning? Motivated by the fact that the augmented views are continuous in frequency, where the relative speeds of different samples are known through augmentation, we provide a simple generalization of the contrastive loss to continuous targets. The classic formulation of the info NC contrastive loss indicates a hard classification task, where the target label is 1 for positive pair and 0 for all other negative pairs. However, negative pairs in SIMPR inherently possesses a meaningful distance, which is reflected by the similarity of their relative speed or frequency. For example, a view at one time speed is more similar to the 0 0.8 time speed than that at 1.5 time speed. Therefore, SIMPR generalizes the info NCE loss from discrete instance discrimination to a weighted loss over all augmented pairs, creating a soft regression variant. Here, the soft target is driven by the speed or frequency similarity of each pair. To evaluate SIMPR, we perform experiments on six periodic learning datasets from multiple domains. This includes a synthetic vision dataset for rotation frequency prediction, and in the wild human action counting dataset, land surface temperature sensing via satellite imaging, and finally, one synthetic and two real human physiological measurement datasets for PPG and heart rate prediction. We show quantitative results on two representative datasets where we pre-train the model using various SSL methods and fine-tune on the unlabeled data to report the final results. For the feature evaluation results, as well as performance on other datasets, please refer to our paper. First, in UBFC, which is a human PPG and heart rate prediction dataset, we compare SIMPER to state-of-the-art SSL methods and observe that SIMPER outperforms all these methods. We highlight that the supervised baseline achieves an MAE of 4.7 bits per minute for heart rate estimation, where SIMPER even outperforms the supervised counterpart by 15%. The results on the human action counting dataset context further confirm the benefits of SIMPER over other methods. Again, SIMPER notably outperforms the supervised baseline. We further show the learning representations of different methods by projecting the features into a two-dimensional space using UMAP. Here, each dot shows one feature vector with the color representing its underlying frequency. For the supervised learning baseline, the learned features are well-ordered and clustered with respect to their frequency, with the darker one having higher frequency. Similarly, we plot the representations learned via self-supervised methods and find that they failed to capture the underlying periodic or frequency information in the data. In contrast, SIMPER learns robust periodic representations with high frequency resolution. We further evaluate whether SIMPER is robust due to limited training data. When the dataset size is large, both supervised learning baseline and SIMPER learn good periodic representations, whereas SIMCLEAR fails to learn meaningful representations. We vary the dataset size from 100% to only 5% and evaluate the corresponding representations. In the case of supervised learning, although the learned features still preserve periodic information, there is a clear degradation when the dataset size is extremely small. SIMCLEAR fails to learn the periodic information across all dataset sizes. Even with small number of training samples, SIMPER can consistently learn the periodic information and maintain high frequency resolution. Finally, given the continuous nature of the frequency domain, periodic learning tasks almost always have unseen frequency targets during training, which motivates the need for frequency extrapolation and interpolation. Specifically, we manually create training sets that have certain missing targets while keeping a test set with evenly distributed targets. In the first example, we remove the frequency targets in the middle of the range 
which corresponds to the interpolation case. For supervised learning, we observe that the model can interpolate missing targets reasonably well, although the resulting frequency resolution is relatively low in the interpolation range. In contrast, simple learns better representations with higher frequency resolution. Next, we look at the case of extrapolation, where the algorithm needs to generalize outside of the training range. For the supervised baseline in the lower frequency range, it extrapolates reasonably well. However, for the higher frequency range, it completely fails to generalize, with learned features largely overlapping with the existing frequency targets in the training set. In contrast, Simper is able to generalize robustly even for the unseen higher frequency range, demonstrating that it's generalized to distributed shifts and unseen targets. I have presented Simper, a simple method for self-supervised learning of periodic targets. For more details, please see our paper, project page, and code repo. Thanks for listening.